Hi everyone and welcome to episode 17 of Conquer the Curse at Benfica with me, the United City FM. Welcome along. So, we have a game against Basel today in our Champions League group stage. If results go our way, then we could potentially qualify in today's game, even though we've still got a couple more to play. Inter Milan doing okay. Bayern Munich struggling just a little bit. If Inter beat Bayern, we could go through. First off, though, have to concentrate on getting that three points ourselves. So let's see how we get on. Welcome back to Benfica. This is, of course, our series Trying to Conquer the Curse, placed on Benfica by Bella Gutman. In the 60s, he had a disagreement with the board took it out on the club by cursing the club and saying that they'd not uh, they'd never win another european trophy for a hundred years 60 years in eight finals later that is still the case benfica have not won a european trophy since so we're trying to change that we are currently i think in our fourth season we're doing all right it's, it's working out okay this season and domestically we've dominated everything for the last couple of seasons we just can't quite get to the, uh, a good run in the knockout stages again we look like we're going to qualify very comfortably from the group stages if we go and look in on our competition page, you'll see that everything is running very smoothly. We're top of the domestic league uh, by three points over Porto. They've got a game in hand, but we've still got to play them twice this season. So that should be OK. And then we go to the Champions League. Benfica sitting top of the group over Inter Milan, Bayern Munich and Basel. As I say, we play Basel today. If we get another three points to take us up to 12 and Inter beat Bayern then we qualify already from this group and that would be spectacular uh, and fairly early really considering the quality of opponent in our group. I'm really happy with how it's going. The, the real challenge comes though, can we continue that form into the knockout stages in the second half of the season? That's for a future day for today. There's not a great deal else to tell you about. We've played a, a three or four games, four games since you and I were together last for the Inter Milan match that we had, which was spectacular. Really good win for us there. We got a good 3-0 win against Basel away from home in our previous Champions League group match. The only slight blip is that we did get a draw against Sporting in the league, in our domestic league. And you can see that it's the first um, game where we haven't actually won this season. We drew it 1-1 away from home. Not a terrible result, just a little bit of a blip. But so far this season has been almost as perfect as you can ask for. Can we keep that up today against Basel in the Champions League group stage at home? I kind of hope so. Let's find out. <laughs> So because things are so comfortable, domestically speaking, it means that we can rotate this 11 a little bit here and there and get most people playing some football um, at most points during the season. So we have rotated again quite recently. That's enabled the first team to have a little bit of a break. The only injury, uh, easy for me to say, injury that we have is Arthur Fiat, who has got a little bit of a knock, unfortunately. He'll be out for the next couple of weeks. He's one of our rotating central defenders so he's not a first team regular but he's a very useful squad player to have so that's unfortunate Morato comes on the bench for him in this particular game but other than that everybody else is fit and healthy and raring to go really as I say having been able to be rotated around so well, that means for the game against Basel in the Champions League group stage we go with Sanchez in goal Poro at right back, Ben Zabani at left back, Badiashili and Zabanye in central defence, Tonali and Verratti in central midfield, Trincao on the right, Everton on the left, Nunes and Mukoko up top, and a bench of Morato, Selic, Luis, Bernardo, Goncalves, Simic and Costa. So let's get into today's game and see what happens. <laughs> Fairly simple on the team talk, really. I mean, the simple reality is we're in very, very good form. So I've just outstretched the arms, encouraged the players and said, stick to the game plan. We'll be fine if you do. And I fully expect us to. At home, against a team that are sitting bottom of our little group in the Champions League at the moment, with zero points after three matches, you'd expect us to be able to dominate this game, get the result. Of course, 
anything can happen. We could, you know, have injuries or sendings off or all sorts that could impact the game. But if we're on an even keel at the end of the game, if we're 11 v 11 still, I expect us to win this match and put the pressure on Bayern Munich to get a, uh, a result against Inter Milan. Because if they don't remember, then we potentially go through at this stage in our group. And that would be pretty uh, impressive. When we drew up a, a, a group with Inter and Bayern in it, I was slightly concerned by that. I thought they would be tricky. But so far, it just has not been the case. Let's see how we cope here, though. Defensively, we win the ball. Badia Shili does well to uh, head the ball um, above the attacker and we regain possession and we do a very, very nice counter-attacking move, really, right the way through the lines. Eventually, uh, Darwin Nunes gets the header, but it's from a long way out and it's kind of a bit of a looping one. Hits the top of the, uh, the netting rather than the goal, unfortunately. Uh, we have possession again, but back with our goalkeeper this time. He goes long. Mukoko wins the ball brilliantly well. And we try to feed the ball through on this left-hand side for Everton, but ultimately the defence cut it out. And they uh, counter with their own long ball forward, but we win the defensive header. Mukoko again in the box, out wide left in the box. Puts it back brilliantly well for the on-running Verratti from midfield. Tonali, Verratti, that combination in midfield has definitely improved us this season. And that's a really lovely ball from Darwin Nunes. It just drifts Mukoko slightly wide and he holds up the play brilliantly. Left-footed, cuts the ball back towards the penalty spot and the on-running Verratti beats the defenders to the ball and smashes it past the goalkeeper for 1-0. Good goal at 18 minutes into the game. It's just a nice, comfortable moment for us to get the goal. And there's a really good special second goal from Everton on this left-hand side as well. Came off a throw-in on this left-hand side. Ben Zabaini gets the ball in. Verratti back to Ben Zabaini. Uh, brilliant ball in. That is some spectacular control from Everton to bring that ball down. Control it past the defender and then slot it past the goalkeeper who really kind of just stood there and looked at him, really. Within five minutes of each other, we go 2-0 up. Really comfortable first half. Nine shots a goal, three on target. One and zero for them. More possession for us, which isn't always the case for us. So that's pretty cool as well. And ultimately... It's looking okay at the moment. Just at the moment, we have a, a Basel attack down the right-hand side. Can we remain defensively secure? We can. Zabanye on this occasion getting the opportunity to get the head, uh, header clear. And we retain uh, possession as well. And work it nicely down the right-hand side for Trincao. Back to Poro. Back into the defence, into midfield again. Verratti looking to split the team over the top. Makoko gets onto it again. Slightly out wide on this left-hand side. Ball comes in this time from Everton. I think Nunes was the player in there. Had a chance, but it got blocked. We retain possession. Uh, and then the highlight goes. Uh, another good opportunity in there. Basel will clear their lines with a goal kick on this highlight. And we win the ball back defensively again. It's a good, solid defensive unit that we've built. Nunes this time uh, gets through, but just uh, gets um, cut off a little bit by the defender. We regain possession, though. We're doing a really fantastic job of regaining possession, mostly in that defensive third, and then getting our chances. <laughs> And that's a really lovely finish by Trincao on the right-hand side. Cutting in off that right-hand side onto his left foot and eventually curls the ball right into the far corner. Goal awarded. There was no reason for it not to be, really. I don't even know why they were reviewing it. Um, but that is a really, really lovely goal. Porro feeds the ball into Trincao, top of the box in that top right-hand corner. Cuts in on his left-hand uh, side and left-footed slots the ball home into the far corner. Really good goal, and it was well onside, no problem with that at all. So, uh, as I say, I'm not quite sure what they were really checking for, to be honest, but it's been a very comfortable first half, as he kind of hoped it would be, really, against the likes of Basel, who have struggled in this group. We'll see how they cope with the second half, but if we can do the same again, I'll be very happy with that. 15 shots at goal to their two. Six on target for us, none for them. 1.2 XG to their 0 0.09. So really fantastic. Completely dominated that first half. Lots of possession. So we can go outstretched arms, doing brilliantly. Keep it up. 
no reason to change a thing at this moment. We're just going to let them play out the game, really. We'll make a few subs later on just for freshness of players, really, just to keep them all playing a little bit in the Champions League where possible and just see if we can dominate the second half like we did the first half. Uh, but it's been a lot like this this season. Domestically speaking, specifically, we've just been very, very at ease, playing a very, very high level compared to the teams around us. And it's just about whether we can put that on the pitch when it becomes much harder in February, March time of next calendar year when we uh, get into the knockout stages of the Champions League. Can we keep this type of uh, run going during that part of the season? We'll have to wait and see. I think the likes of Verratti and Tonali in that central midfield have definitely improved us. If we can keep everybody fit and rotating in the domestic stuff well to keep our first team out on every game that we play in the Champions League, then we might have a little bit of a chance to do something. You never quite know. Uh, Zabarnier gets fouled on the ball. We're probably going to remove him from the firing line a little bit in a, in a minute or two, just because he's picked up a yellow card that we just have to be aware. I don't want to get any suspensions if I can help it. So 68, 69 minutes on the clock. We're going to pause the game there. We're going to take... Uh, Zabonye out, put Morato in and protect him from that yellow card. And then actually conditioning is pretty good because we've been able to rotate. So nobody's uh, really struggling too much and everybody's playing well. So it's about who would you like to see really from the bench. Uh, and what I'd like to see actually is I'm going to take both of our strikers out and put Simic and Costa in. They're very good for us and domestically they're getting goals for us here and there where need be. I'd like to see them in the Champions League getting a, a few fixtures here and there. So we're going to do that. And of course, that has the added benefit of resting Nunes and Mukoko as well, which is really fantastic because they're vitally important for us. Such good players for us. As Everton gets through again, but the goalkeeper parries it. There was a, a, an issue with a free kick at the top of the box. Tonali with a brilliant strike from the free kick just inside that D at the top of the box. Uh, where the pl uh, the ball was placed, uh, the the defensive wall was just behind the penalty spot, and it was a really great strike up and over the wall into that top right hand corner. <coughs> Excuse me, and a really fantastic strike for four nil. We've got fifteen minutes to play. We've made all of our subs. I don't need to do anything. I don't need to change anything. We're just going to let the game play out and see if we can be consistent all the way through and try and keep a clean sheet. And again, defensively look really solid then. And we get Simic through, and he powers it at the goalkeeper, unfortunately, on this occasion, but he powers it away for a corner kick. But yeah, I'm, I'm really impressed defensively with how we've coped with whatever Basel have put against us today. It hasn't been a lot, but they've stayed uh, fairly well concentrated when they needed to be. Of course, I'm <laughs> causing them a problem by saying that, probably. We've still got 15 minutes to go. I'd really like a clean sheet. I think our performance has deserved one so far. And that was a really close call again from Morato at that near post from the corner kick. Got the header on goal, but glanced the ball off his forehead and it went slightly narrowly wide. Corner in for Basel. Unfortunately, they have broken the deadlock, which is disappointing to me. It came off a corner kick, which is also a slightly disappointing off those set pieces, really. Sanchez was left flailing a little bit in goal. 4-1. There's no issue with the game. It's just a little bit disappointing that we couldn't quite see the game out with a clean sheet and a very, very good defensive display. It's been incredibly good anyway. Tonali with another free kick, this time slightly narrowly wide. From slightly further out, it must be said. A couple of minutes left to play. Look, we've dominated this game. 62% possession. We've had 30-plus shots at goal. Uh, 13 on target. 5-1 and one for them. So you can see we got a 3.7 XG rating. This was as dominant as you will likely see. We got a goal each for our two central midfielders. We got a goal each for our two wide men, which is really fantastic. Strikers today didn't quite find the, uh, their shooting boots, but didn't really need them to. But the team as a whole played fantastically well. And it's Tonali that gets man of the match with an 8.7, but ably supported by a number of other players getting some really good high, um, high marks. The only one that was unfortunate was the goalkeeper who 
was flailing a little bit off that corner kick, unfortunately. But he's been great for us this season. No complaints with him, really. It's just unfortunate we couldn't quite keep that clean sheet. But ultimately, very good three points. Let's go and see what happened with Inter Milan and Bayern. Have we managed to qualify or have Bayern pulled out a result that just keeps it moving forward just a little bit? Let's find out. So whilst I don't think it will cause us too many problems, <laughs> refer back to this moment when it does, unfortunately, Bayern Munich did pull out a victory against Inter Milan. It puts both of those teams on six points. We're on 12 points, two games left to play, so we are six points clear. In theory, they can come back and get us. Uh, or at least one of them could. We have to play both of them. So any form of win or draw against either of them would put us through comfortably, which is fine. But it just gives you a little bit of a nervy feeling that maybe there's a route in which they could come back for us. Uh, mathematically speaking, it's challenging to figure out exactly how all that out works. They, don't, they both have to basically beat Basel and both have to beat me. Uh, and that is entirely possible for them to do, isn't it, really? So it's not done yet, but it kind of almost is. And even if we can get one draw against one of them, then I'll happily take it. So what are we coming back for next time around? You can see everything else that's going on is perfectly great domestically. If we go back to the schedule, though, what we do is we play the second, the fourth and the sixth games in any of our group stages because it covers all three of the teams that we uh, get drawn against. So Inter Milan, we played earlier in the season on an episode. So it will be Bayern Munich that we come back for early December at home for us, which is really positive. Earlier in the season, we did play them and get a 2-1 win against them. So that's pretty cool. So a, a result like that would do us the world of good. So Inter Milan up next. Maybe I can get a win there and, and get through the group stage at that point. Who knows? In and around those games as well, we've got a few domestic games in terms of a cup match and a couple of Premier League matches in Portugal as well. So it's all looking pretty good. The key match for us, domestically speaking, happens soon after that Bayern Munich game that we'll come back for next episode in the Champions League in the next game against Porto. Because those double matches against Porto often determine who's going to win the title. And at the moment, it's very close between the two of us. Hardly dropping any points. So we'll see whether we can get a positive result there as well. But yeah, at the moment, it's looking pretty spectacular, isn't it? And it's just about whether we can continue that on for the rest of this season. For now, though, we focus on those two matches. Inter Milan away from home in the Champions League. And then Bayern Munich next episode in uh, the home match to finish off the Champions League group stage. Can we qualify? I would think so. But it's just a little seed of doubt in there and a little bit of hope for everybody else. So that's going to do it for today. Thank you for joining me. Really appreciate it. Hope you're doing fantastically well out there, whatever you're up to. Let me know in the comments below how your football manager saves are going yourself. Until next time, thank you for joining me today. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and join my United City community. The more the merrier. Click that like button on this particular episode. That will help me get seen by more people. Until next time, take care of yourselves. I'll see you very soon. Bye for now.